Well, good morning, friends. I hope you've enjoyed so far the little service that my children wanted to put together for this Sunday. I hope as well that your Christmas has gone as well as it could have done in these very strange uh, times. At least you've got a chance to see the Christmas jumper I showed you on uh, Christmas morning itself. We're going to just spend a little bit of time looking at God's word now. So let's pray as we do that together. Heavenly Father, your word is truth. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. And Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. And so, Lord God of truth, we pray now that as we look to your word, as we look to the Lord Jesus, as we trust you, Holy Spirit, to fill us, so we might know the truth and it would set us free. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad that Mary chose Psalm 107 as our first Bible reading. I've never preached on it and I'm not going to spend much time on it now, but I wonder if you notice that cycle, uh, one after the other, and again, of natural disaster, of human catastrophe, uh, of sinful choices, that repeating pattern of a powerful threat emerging. The people cry out to the Lord in their trouble. The Lord delivers, and then the refrain, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. I'm sure you can apply that to the current shared situation of the pandemic, but we can apply this psalm uh, to our own troubles as well. It envisages, it envisages a myriad of uh, different woes that may afflict us and says to us that when trouble comes, always let this be our first response. Cry out to the Lord and look to him for his deliverance. And then when it comes, short time or long, give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for us. I was particularly struck by the note of grace uh, in the psalm. If you're rereading the psalm afterwards, and I'd encourage you to do that, perhaps in a, a family prayer time or on your own uh, at home, reread that psalm and compare verse 11 and verse 20. In verse 11, suffering has come because, quote, they had rebelled against the words of God. Some of our suffering is self-inflicted, and the psalm focuses in that section on that. But then in verse 20, he sent forth his word and healed them. How gracious is our God. The very word against which we sin is the word out of which he brings his healing. I'll leave you to meditate on that. As I say, I'm grateful that Mary chose that for our first reading, but I want to spend a few minutes with you in our second reading that Leah and Noah read so marvellously for us uh, just a moment ago. I'm only going to focus uh, on one verse of this magnificent uh, reading, which we otherwise haven't touched on uh, this Christmas, except at the Hartford Church of England High School uh, Year 7 Carol Services. When we started uh, our series in John's Gospel back in May 2018. Uh, I gave reasons uh, for this, but I believe that John has structured his prologue to draw our attention to verse 12 as the jewel in its centre, as the uh, key point that he wants to make in these opening 18 verses. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. C.S. Lewis, in an era before our language was reshaped, uh, said this, the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. In other words, God's Son became one of us so that we could become God's children. That doesn't quite have the same cadences, but it makes the point that he was making, or rather the point that John was making to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. So just three brief points about that verse, which will enable us, as we come to Jesus in his birth, and what it means for us to give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. First, in verse 12 of John 1, the gift itself, is to become a child of God. And when we think about what that means, uh, it is extraordinary. We can only sketch one or two thoughts uh, this morning. The first 
thing to notice, and it's a negative point, but an important one, is that not everyone, therefore, is God's child. Jesus is making a promise that those who believe on him and receive him will become the children of God, and therefore not everybody is by nature a child of God. This is a gift which we need to receive if we are to become God's children. In fact, John's Gospel, as it unfolds, will reveal many people who presumed they were God's children or thought they deserved to be God's children, but in fact they weren't. And their presumption and pride was revealed for just that, not at all saving faith. So are we sure that we are God's children? Well, if we're not sure, then reading the rest of John's Gospel uh, is a good way to answer that question for us. Indeed, he wrote the whole Gospel so that we might discover who Jesus is and in believing in him have this life in God's family in his name. Second thing I want you to notice about the gift that Jesus gives is that it's in the plural. He gave the right to become the children of God. He picked up that note in the second verse uh, of the song which we sang uh, here. That beneath the cross of Jesus, his family is my own. Beneath the cross of Jesus, see the children called by God. We really must think of our relationship with God as in the plural. He becomes my father when I put my trust in Jesus Christ. Only in the sense that he becomes our father. For we become together the children of God. There is no splendid isolation uh, in the purposes of God in bringing his grace and truth to us in Jesus. He saves a people, not just isolated individuals. And in a year uh, when we have been able to tune in or out of anything uh, we want to do online, we are going to have to remember that belonging to the Father means belonging to an actual flesh and blood community of believers, not just clicking away to this or that at virtual gathering, because in the end we cannot show that we love him unless we are actually getting on with the messy business of loving one another as sisters and brothers in a local church. We can't love by clicking. We long for the end of this in order that we might be once again gathered as the children of God. Notice too the little word right. He gave the right to become children uh, of God. In the older translation, in the authorised version, he gave the power to become the children of God. It's a strong word, uh, more usually translated as authority. Uh, the next time John uses it in his gospel will be in chapter 5, uh, where it describes Jesus' absolute authority to judge the world given to him by his Father. We have the right the powerful right, Jesus says, to become God's children. And what does that mean? It means if you are one of God's children, no one can take you out of God's family. He gives the right to become one of God's children. No satanic whisper, no human condemnation, no scorn from an unbeliever, no ecclesiastical judgment, no conscience that convicts of the sins that we look to Jesus to forgive us for nothing can remove that right he gives it and he has absolute authority to give it and so when we are one of God's children well then he will never drive us away nothing can ever take us out of his hand second the gift of becoming one of God's children is offered by Jesus in grace to all. Jesus is the Word who was with God and who was God. And he is the one through whom all things were made. He is the true light that has now come into the world. He is the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth. And he, the true Son of God, is the one who gives the right to become one of God's children. If we want to know if there really is a God, if he's really there, can we trust him? Can we know him? Well, then Jesus is the only one to whom we can find those answers. And when we do come to Jesus, we will find truth and love in all its fullness 
in him. He will never turn us away when we look to him and receive him. Jesus is the one who offers us this gift. And he offers this gift to everyone, to all who received him. He gave the right to become the children of God. He said there are none who are so good that they deserve to be God's children. And there are none so bad that they would be denied the right to become God's child if they will come to Jesus Christ in faith. John will tell uh, many stories uh, in his gospel, of which this is just the beginning, uh, of people that Jesus met. And they will go both ways. There will be in chapter 3 the learned senior religious man who struggles to receive the God he has degrees in. And then in the next chapter there will be the foreign woman whose sins are so public and scandalous that she's shunned by her own neighbours. And yet she is immediately accepted and cleansed and set free as she receives Jesus as her saviour. Oh, to all who will receive him. This is a gift that is held out to you this morning, now, wherever you're listening to this in the world, in whatever time uh, you're hearing this, to all who received him, he gave the right to become the children of God. And we see particularly uh, in the giving of this gift, the grace, uh, when we compare it to the two verses that precede it, he was in the world, Jesus was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. You see, that word of receiving has already been used negatively to characterise all of us. All of us are in the world that God through Christ has made. And by nature, by sinful, rebellious instinct, we do not receive him or recognise him. He came to his own, that is, the covenant people of God, the Jewish people, and they did not receive him either. Now, whether we're Jewish or Gentile, in other words, if we're human, by nature, John has already told us, we do not receive him or recognise him. And yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. This is a grace gift. This is amazing grace. That saves wretches like me and will save a wretch like you as well if you will receive him. Jesus comes into a world that rejects him and yet he does not turn his back in judgment but rather he comes and goes to the cross the Lamb of God in order that he might save us and in dying for us in our place and bearing the curse of our rejection of him and our remaking of right and wrong in our own eyes so clears the way for us to receive his righteousness and to become those who have this right to become the children of God. That's the story John will tell. We can't tell it all this morning. But third and finally, we receive this gift by receiving the giver to all who received him, to those who believed in his name. He gave the right to become the children of God it's not about anything that we do or that we offer or that we bring. It's not about our good works and whether or not they'll outweigh the bad. They won't, so that's hopeless. It's not about religious ritual. There are many people conducting religious rituals. Now John will tell us about some of those in his gospel. Not one of those rituals saves anybody. It's not even by faith in the sense that people have when they sometimes say to me, I wish I had your faith, as though it was something special in me, something that I've conjured up uh, out of the resources of my own spirit. I haven't got those resources. There is nothing in me that is attracting of God's grace that I might become his child. It's not about us at all. How then do we become the children of God? By looking away from ourselves to him. Look only to him. Trust him. Jesus will tell that a religious leader who struggled to understand. He says, remember the story of the time when Moses just held up a snake in the desert and all the people had to do was look. And when they looked, they lived. 
Well, so it is. Look to Jesus. Receive him. Uh, believe in his name. And you will become one of the children of God. Well, we must finish for today. And as we bring Christmas to a close, and yes, I know there are still 12 days, and I'm going to get a few more outings of this jumper uh, in those 12 days of Christmas. But the main day is over. We're beginning, aren't we, to look ahead to what's coming uh, next. My hope and prayer is that this passage, this verse, uh, will help us to set our direction at St John's for the future. Uh, this is our God and this is our calling to walk in Jesus' truth and to live in Jesus' love, holding him and his gift of membership of God's eternal loving family out to our community and inviting all to receive him. And then uh, the chorus will grow louder of those who give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, perhaps there are some who are watching this who don't yet know what it is to become a child, to be a child of God. We, I pray now uh, that as they come to you, they might receive you and believe in your name and so be adopted by your Father into your family. Lord Jesus, there'll be some who believe but who are struggling. Please, would that right to become one of the children of your Father be written deeply on our hearts, that we might know your love that will never leave us and never let us go. And Lord Jesus, we pray that the light that you brought into the world would shine as a city on a hill, that as we walk in your truth and live in your love at St John's, so many might come to rejoice in you, to know you for themselves. We ask this to your Father's glory. Amen.